Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. The last couple of weeks, we were talking about neural inflammation. Today, we're gonna to talk about the symptoms of severe neural inflammation. So let's get into it. When we talk about the symptoms of severe um, neurodegeneration or neural inflammation, we're talking about delirium, confusion, and disorientation. So if someone suddenly becomes delirious or they have disorientation and confusion, it can be an inflammatory process that could be going on. Also, it could be a vascular issue where there's shunting of blood to certain areas or there's a blockage of a vessel, right? So when we have these types of signs, it's, and it's a sudden onset, uh, it's a medical emergency. If it's a slow and progressive uh, process where you go from fatigue to a little bit of memory loss to confusion and disorientation, it can be a neurodegenerative, neuroinflammatory process. The other thing is dementia, personality, or behavior changes. So dementia or Alzheimer's are uh, issues where you have plaquing in the brain um, related to uh, an inflammatory process, or they call it type three diabetes, basically a diabetes of the brain where it's not functioning the way you should. In, in regards to inflammation, all those things can affect how the brain itself will function. So the brain is very sensitive to inflammatory processes as well as fluctuations in blood sugar, chemicals, and those types of things. So whenever you have signs and symptoms of uh, memory loss or behavioral changes or sudden personality changes, it's a red flag, right? It has severe neurodegenerative processes going on. Obviously, if you're in a coma or you um, have seizures, it can be an inflammatory process. So seizures, there are a number of types of seizures, right? Partial seizures, complex seizures, tonic-clonic seizures, absent seizures. So there's a bunch of different ones. I mean, you can go on and, and have a whole lecture just on seizures. However, if you have a seizure, that seizure in itself can be inflammatory because it's actually shunting blood away from certain areas and it's creating an inflammatory process every time you have a seizure. So seizure in itself causes inflammation and inflammation itself in the brain can cause seizures, right? So if you have seizures, it has to be managed, right? Because if you have repetitive seizures, it's gonna be called epilepsy and you're gonna damage the brain. So you have to either take your medications or if you wanna go the nutritional route, certainly you can do things like a ketogenic diet, which allows your brain to use ketones rather than sugar in, our, uh, in the brain function, right? Another one is difficulty speaking. So on the left side of the brain for predominant number of people, like 99% of, of the population, they have the area called the Broca's area on the left side. And the Broca's area is the motor aspect of speech. So if you have difficulty producing words or speech in itself, it can be problematic and it could be the Broca's area. If you have a comprehension issue of speech, so the area that comprehends speech is called the Wernicke's area in the back uh, on the left side. So in, in, in essence, all the issues with speech is on the left side. So if you have issues there, you can have difficulty speaking. Another one is trembling, tremors, or involuntary twitches or movements and those types of things, right? These things should not happen. So if you have a tremor or a resting tremor or a physiological tremor, or what we call that intention tremor, which is cerebellar base where you reach and you shake your hands, right? These are all different types of tremors or trembling and those types of things. It could be an indication that they have um, inflammatory processes in the brain or what we call microglial activation in the brain. So it's very important to understand that not all these conditions are just, you know, unanswered. Uh, there's no answers for it. It could be an inflammatory process for all these conditions. So it's important to kind of dig deep and figure out where the problem lies for most of these patients, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side.
Have an awesome day.